Well, good morning. And congratulations. You've made the decision. You're gonna get yourself a heat pump. Now, this is part five of our series. In part one, we talked about the location of your heat pump. In part two, we talked about the pipework and the location of your hot water tank. In part three, we talked about all things insulation and getting an EPC done. Part four was all about electrical. And today, in part five, we're gonna talk about radiators and finishing touches. Now, as part of your installation, you're probably gonna to need to replace some or all of your existing radiators. As you can see here, our front room radiator has been replaced with a large three vane radiator. Now, it was important to us to make sure that it fitted into the existing space underneath the window. But to be able to get the heat energy that we needed, it required a much deeper radiator. Originally here, we had a single pane radiator. We've now gone to a triple pane radiator. Here in the hallway, we already had an existing double pane radiator. But as you can see, although we've still stayed with a double pane radiator, we've actually gone to a much taller model. This allows us again to get the heat energy required to heat the house and make sure that every room stayed consistently warm. Now, one thing you will notice is that the copper piping is all left bare. Now, it's up to you. Some people will paint this to match the wall. Um, personally, I've been told before, don't paint it because if you do need to make any changes to it, it can be a pain to get the paint off if you need to get in and, and redo any of the joints. They will also fit these TRV valves uh, to every single radiator. You do not need them. And in fact, the recommendation from my plumber was to leave these fully open. Otherwise, what you're doing is putting stress on the heat pump to try and force more heat energy into the radiator by closing these down. Um, they're really not needed, but as part of the MCS uh, requirements, they have to be fitted to every single new radiator. Now, one of the things you can do to, uh, to cover up the copper piping there is on Amazon, um, in B&Q and places, you can get these kits that allow you to put basically plastic white sleeving over the pipes to make it look a little nicer. And in fact, we'll head upstairs now and I'll show you one that I've already done in my bathroom. So as you can see here, rather than have the copper piping coming directly out the, the uh, radiator, and um, we've got a little piece of plastic sleeving that goes over it, and a little plastic piece there that covers the holes in the wall, or in this case, in the tile, um, just to make things look a little nicer. Now, one of the other things you need to consider is when they remove your gas boiler, what happens to the old boiler flue? Now, in my case, we had quite a large boiler flue. Um, you can see by the new bricks there, the size that the hole in the wall that was left behind. So it really wasn't a, a simple case of just bung in some uh, expanding builder's foam and block the hole up. In this case, they did actually come along. Um, there's two rows of bricks in there. It is sealed in nice and neatly. Now, I'm sure the builders out there are saying, well, why didn't they tie in the bricks properly? Well, two reasons. One is that uh, the bricks don't actually match. The, the bricks for the house are just weren't available, the, the same type of bricks. So these were the nearest match we could get. And later on next year, when we remodel the kitchen, our plan is to put a door here anyway. So um, that was a perfectly good uh, fix as far as we were concerned. Now, if you've got a small flue, a hole, I have seen a number of installations where they've basically squirted some uh, expanding foam into it and put a fake uh, cover on the outside wall. Personally, I think that's a pretty poor way to seal it up. Um, so please do check with your installer exactly what their plans are, what they're gonna do with the existing flue. Now, another thing to consider is where is your thermostat gonna go? Most installations, I would imagine, are probably gonna be a single zone for the whole house. And the default location that they generally want to put these is where your existing thermostat is. In most UK houses, certainly in most modern build houses, the thermostat seems to be in the hallway close to the front door. Generally, this is one of the colder parts of the house because the door gets opened and closed quite a lot. So this thermostat here will obviously read the temperature in this part of the house. And it means that the rest of the house might be slightly warmer. Really the best place for this is in the room that you're gonna be inhabiting most of the time. So in your front room or your dining room or wherever it is that you as a family live. 
Don't just assume that because you had a thermostat there before, that's where it's got to go. Talk to your installer, find the ideal location for your thermostat. So one last thing to consider is your installation is gonna take anywhere from four to five days, most likely. At that time, you're gonna have plumbers and electricians and maybe other workmen all on site. So think ahead, where are they gonna park? You may need to find parking for three to four vans um, outside close to your house because they're gonna to need to be able to get access to those vans. Now we're in a fortunate position, we've got a large number of private parking spaces at the front of our house. But maybe if you're on a street, if you don't have uh, your own parking, maybe consider it, talk to your neighbors, um, figure out where the, everybody's gonna park because you really don't wanna be upsetting your neighbors whilst you're having your heat pump installed. That's it for this video. I hope you found this video and this entire series useful. If you are considering getting a heat pump, these are just a few of the things that, having had the heat pump installed and lived with it for a little while, that I've learned that might make your journey just that little bit easier. It just remains for me to say thank you for clicking on this video. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another one. Take care, bye-bye.